Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I am so, so excited for you to be here because this video is likely the most important video I'll ever record in my entire life. And it's because it's the birth story. I'm so excited to be recording this. It is so long overdue. I mean, Grant is four and a half months old now, so that's how long overdue it is. I've tried recording this like four other times and my cameras just wouldn't let me be great. Either the battery was dead or it didn't come into focus, like everything else around me was in focus, but I wasn't in focus, so hopefully we get it right this time. So I want to just take you through what happened, basically the 25 hours of, you know, the birthing of Grant. Yeah, I have my um, phone here with some of my notes because like I said, it was four and a half months ago, so it's hard to remember every single detail, but hopefully I can cover everything that I that I can. So before we get into the timeline of everything, I just want to preface this with several things. First, this is my story. Uh, this is no one else's story. Please do not compare your experience with mine or prejudge what your experience may be with mine. Um, if you are currently expecting, it's just everyone's story is unique and it's their own, and that's what makes it so precious, but I uh, just wanted to put that out there. Also, my birth was in, it was an all natural unmedicated birth that took place at a birth center, not at a hospital or a maternity ward. It was at a birth center where there are no uh, medications involved. There's not any even on site. So there's just no option of it once you're there, unless you need to be transferred to a hospital for any uh, complication or other reason. Um, I worked with a midwife, which I highly recommend if you are low risk. And that's typically when you would want to work with a midwife um, and or give birth at a birth center or at home is if you're at a low risk pregnancy. I am not an expert, another disclaimer, I'm not an expert, I'm not a doctor. Um, I'm not a midwife, I'm not a doula, I'm not any of those things. I am just a woman who gave birth. But so any of my recommendations or anything that I speak about is just again, my experience, it is not um, me trying to tell you what you should do, but this is just what worked for me. Yeah. So those are all the disclaimers I think I have so far. I will also say that while we were searching for the right uh, provider for us, did go through uh, the gamut of different options. So working with an obstetrician being one, working with a midwife and giving birth at a birth center or working with a midwife and having a home birth. Those were kind of the three options we explored. We originally started with working with an obstetrician and um, although she seemed great, um, she really more so seemed great for someone else, just not for us in terms of the things we wanted to do while we were pregnant as well as what kind of birth I don't want to use plan because things don't necessarily go according to plan, but our birthing preferences that we wanted during um, while we were in labor and delivery. So those things didn't necessarily jive with our obstetrician. So we looked to other options, which was working with midwives. And we figured that for our first experience, it was best for us to work with a midwife that um, had a birth center where we could go and give birth rather than her coming to us into our home. So that's what we went with. So now that we've got all that out of the way, which hopefully is everything, we may have to throw in some other things here and there as I tell our story, but um, yeah, let's get into it. Just kidding. I have two more disclaimers, just two, not disclaimers, but just two things to note. So one is um, I am going to use the terms. What do I mean by that? I'm not going to necessarily sugarcoat anything. Um, I am going to say how things are as they happened. Um, so it may seem like TMI or it may seem like some terms make some people queasy. Uh, for example, mucus plug, gonna be saying it. So just wanna put that out there. And then the other thing I want to say before we get into the true timeline of the birth story is that my guest date was May 12th. That was my guest date. I call it a guest date because call it a due date makes it seem like it's final, like that is the date and that's not it at all. It's truly an estimated date based off of your last period and all of those things. So I uh, just want to put that out there. And I started to feel contractions on May 3rd. So it was more than a week before he was due that I started to feel contractions. Um, I will say that prior to May 3rd, 
I wasn't feeling any labor symptoms or signs, like none. I was just going about my business as I should, you know, and I'm um, just getting bigger and slightly more uncomfortable, but like I wasn't really experiencing Braxton Hicks or anything like that. And in any of my appointments with my midwife, I hadn't done any in internal exams to see if I was dilated or if I was effacing, like none of those things. It just didn't seem super necessary to me. Um, I was like, if I start feeling things, like sure, then we can do an internal exam. But just because everything seemed to be going as it should have, I just didn't see the need to do it. So very early morning of May 3rd, 2020, at 1 a.m., I woke up and went to the bathroom. I did that every night pretty much uh, for the third trimester. And so when I went to go do that, and once I was finished and I wiped my area down there, I noticed on the toilet paper that there was something different. There was some mucus on there. So I was like, okay, after, you know, however many months of reading all things that have to do with labor and delivery, I was like, okay, this looks like a mucus plug and it's different. It's different for me. I haven't seen that before. I examined it and I noticed that there was a little bit of blood in it, like a tiny, tiny bit. And I was like, okay, again, from what I'd researched, uh, when your mucus plug has some spotting in it, it usually means that labor is coming. Um, the term coming is relative. It could mean that it's coming in very quickly or it could take several hours before it really kicks in. So I was like, no big deal. At that point, I had felt some discomfort down there, but it was so mild, like it was barely there. But it was enough between that and just thinking that maybe I was in labor. It was that all together was enough for me to say, I can't go to bed. Um, my mind was racing and I just could not fall back asleep. So, you know, is what it is. I got back into bed and I just watched TV because that's what I, I did at that point. Just threw on some friends and just tried to get my mind off of things. I didn't even wake up Nick. Like that's, that's how like super my health they were. And I just wasn't sure. I was like, is it just, is it, could it be Braxton Hicks or is it just the beginning of labor signs since I'm not due for another week and a half. So I was like, not going to think too much of it. But as time went on, the cramping started to increase in intensity a little bit. There was no consistency to it though. I did at this point start timing things. I, I got an app called Contractions Timer and this is what it looks like. And it's, I believe it's free. That's what I used to track my contractions. And it was all over the place. Intensity was just not even a thing at this point. Yeah, so around 3.30, I went to the bathroom again and um, noticed again that there was mucus plug with some spotting in it. And um, the discomfort that I was feeling was, I could feel it a little bit more, but again, it was just relatively speaking pretty mild. And I was just like, well, we'll just hang out for a little bit. At this point, I did wake Nick up just to let him know. And I was like, I don't think we need to contact our midwife yet. We'll, we'll wait until things continue to progress because I just didn't want to inform her and then it'd be a false alarm since we were just so, so early on. Um, so I just waited. And then at around five o'clock in the morning, which I thought was a more reasonable time to text the midwife versus 3.30 a.m., <laughs> um, I texted our midwife, her name is Holly, and just gave her an update, just told her what was going on. And so at that point, there was nothing that was super consistent and each contraction was lasting 30, 60 seconds. And it was anywhere between three and a half to six minutes apart. So again, like very inconsistent. The intensity was also pretty inconsistent. It was all over the place as well, but they were, they were increasing in intensity. It was all over the place, but like you could, the little like red thread between them is that they were slightly increasing throughout time. Uh, but that's just kind of the update I gave my midwife and she just responded with, great, thanks for the update. Just let me know how things progress. Probably for the next couple of hours, it did kind of slightly intensify. And then at around like 8, 8.30, it started to just start going down. Like being further apart, I really couldn't almost feel them anymore. And by nine o'clock in the morning, again, May 3rd, couldn't really feel them anymore. So I texted my midwife and just told her, hey, this is what's going on. Pretty much they've gone away at this point. And she was like, well, that's honestly a good thing because now you can take a break and rest. She's like, try to rest as much as you can. Um, in the event that they come back and they come back stronger. So I was like, okay. So that's what I did, I hung out. I think at this point I called my mom and my sister and let them know what was going on um, and that I would just keep them in the loop if anything had changed. So I laid on our couch, but kind of hung out. I tried to make sure I stayed, I stayed hydrated. So I drank a lot of water throughout that time, had a small snack to eat um, and just chilled out. And then at around 11 o'clock in the morning, the contractions started back up. 
at around the same intensity that they had um, peaked at in the morning. So again, like very, very mild. Uh, they were still really inconsistent in terms of how far apart they were. They were like anywhere between five and 10 minutes apart. Um, and then, like I said, the intensity was there, but also inconsistent. It gets strong and then it would drop. Then it gets strong and it could drop. So it was all over the place. So that continued for several hours and probably after like 1, 1.30, the, the intensity started to get some consistency in terms of it just getting stronger. And uh, again, I would I would rate it as like mild to moderate. Like it wasn't super crazy, uh, but I could feel them. And then at around three o'clock in the afternoon is when I really, I needed to walk and breathe through the contractions. So they were definitely more on the moderate side by three o'clock. And so every time I felt one coming, um, I got up and I just walked around our house and just would breathe through each one, just taking deep breaths in and exhaling out. And it was just, that's the best way I could get through those contractions at that time. And then at around 3.45, I texted Holly again and just gave her an update. I let her know that the contractions were getting stronger, but they were still inconsistent. Um, in terms of timing. So again, they were still anywhere between five to 10 minutes apart at this point, but they were there. Like there was no question of whether or not there were contractions, they were there. <laughs> and I also let her know that anytime I did pee, I was continuing to get more mucus plug, which is normal because uh, pretty much your mucus plug can regenerate, mainly because it is a barrier to infection for um, your uterus, so um, it will. your body will continue to produce it um, as time goes on, basically until your water breaks. It may continue to do it after, and I'm not an expert, so I can't tell you exactly, but I know it will continue to regenerate as you're um, laboring and contracting. Uh, and then from there, the contractions again kept getting stronger, kept getting stronger. So at around five o'clock, the contractions were strong, like very strong. Um, they were at the point where I couldn't just walk and breathe through them like I was before. When I was close to the peak of the contraction, I'd have to stop and then hunch over something like the kitchen island, the bathroom vanity, the couch, something, whatever was closest to me um, and kind of sway my hips to get through the peak of the contraction. And then I could walk for the remainder of it um, as I was coming down from that contraction. So um, they, were, they were really strong at that point. Uh, and that continued for another couple hours and around seven o'clock we gave Holly another update and just let her know that the contractions were definitely very, very strong um, and however, they were still inconsistent in terms of the timing. There was just no consistency at any point Up until then, like there was just nothing. And after we gave her that update, she responded and said, okay, well, uh, make sure you get something to eat. She asked if I had dinner yet and I had it. So I made a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and she was like, that's perfect, just have that. And I couldn't even finish um, making the peanut butter and jelly sandwich because I, I don't know what made me go into the bathroom. Maybe I had to pee or something, but I went into our bathroom and a contraction came and I had to get up and start moving again. And during that contraction, Nick was with me in the bathroom as well. So again, don't know how that all happened, how it came to be, but we were both in the bathroom and um, I was hunched over the, the vanity in the bathroom and my water broke, um, like broke. Everyone's got a different experience with water breaking. What you see on TV is not necessarily what will happen in real life. And sometimes what you see on TV does happen in real life. For me, it's not really what you see on TV where there's like, gushing water coming out um, for me there was definitely water coming out but it wasn't like a free-for-all like flow what did happen right after I like literally right after I my water broke I peed uh, I didn't realize I was peeing I thought it was more um, fluid coming out but it was pee and I just didn't realize and I was like oh crap I think I'm peeing so <laughs> I went to the bathroom and finished peeing in there and Nick, the legend that he is, he cleaned everything up while I was in the bathroom and texted our midwife and let her know that my water broke and she was like, all right, it's go time. It's time for you guys to head to the birth center. So at around eight o'clock in the evening, we pack up the car and head up to the birth center. So the birth center is about 35 minutes away from my house. The, the thing I was most concerned with for the ride to the birth center was contracting in the car. So like I said, to get through the contractions, what I needed to do was to be walking around or standing. Sitting through a contraction was horrible. Um, I knew it from experience in the house. Like I tried to sit through a contraction 
and it just didn't work. Not even on an exercise ball. It was horrible sitting through my contractions. So that's what I worried about the most in the car because I'm like, there's nothing I can do. I have to sit in the car. Um, but thankfully, I only contracted like two, three times in the car on our way there. Um, and I never got to eat that peanut butter and jelly sandwich. I tried to eat one bite of it and it took me literally the entire 35 minutes to the Brooke Center to even chew it and swallow that one bite. I just couldn't do it. We arrive at the birth center. I just walk right in. I'm like, hi, Holly, I'm here. Walk right in because at this point, my contractions, nothing that I could have imagined. Like, you think you can imagine what a contraction in terms of its intensity and strength is going to be and you just can't. Until you experience it, you really can't. Speaking was just not my, my best skill at this point. So I walked right in. We did give her like a brief update of what what's going on and she was like, great. She's like, you're just gonna continue to contract here and that's what we did. So I resumed what I was doing at home, which was when I was going through a contraction, I just hunched over something and kind of swayed my hips through it. So I parked up into um, the bathroom at the birth center. What's so great about the birth center is it just does, doesn't feel like a birth center. It feels like you're in a home. Big bedroom um, and a very nice sized bathroom with a freestanding tub and a shower and so it was, it was very comfortable. At some point, pretty early on, we tried to get me into the tub with water because I hadn't made a decision beforehand of whether I wanted to do a water birth or not because I didn't want to have the expectations that I was gonna do a water birth and it not work and me get disappointed. So I just said, we will try it. We'll go with the flow once I get there. If it's something that I feel like it helps me, then for sure, but if not, then it's fine. So we gave it a try. After about five minutes, I knew that it wasn't gonna work for me because like I said, I needed to be standing and walking and hunching over and all that stuff to get through my contractions. So being in the water just didn't work. So since the water didn't help, got out of the tub and just continued to contract like I was doing before and did that for a couple more hours. And then a little around 10 o'clock, Holly, just she suggested that we try something else. She was concerned that I was gonna tire myself out by standing through all of my contractions. So she's like, let's try something else. So she had like a U-shaped blow up um, that she placed on the bed. Um, she was like, how about we have you hunch over this, uh, but you can at least give your legs a break by just like kneeling on the bed and being hunched over on this U-shaped blow up. So we used that for a little bit and my contractions at this point were just insane. <laughs> they were just insane. like. I'm just being completely honest with you and I don't wanna scare anybody, but I'm just, again, being really honest. It was so, so intense. I'm trying to stay away from the word painful. I'm sticking with intense. It was just so intense. There were some contractions where I cried, cried through them because that's just what my body needed to release and get through the contraction. We did that for about an hour, then Holly's wanted to do an internal check. So this is like my first inter internal check um, ever. I tried to relax. It was hard to do because contractions were like boom, 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 like right on top of each other. Did an internal check and I remember feeling disappointed because of how little I had dilated at that point because with it that much intensity, you think you would have dilated, like you were ready to go, but I was not. It was only four centimeters dilated at this point. So this was about like at 11 o'clock. And so she was like, all right, um, this is not as far as I would have liked us to be, so let's try a different position. She's like, I know that laying down makes the contractions that much more intense for you. She's like, but maybe that's what we need. So I was like, all right, you know, I have full trust in my midwife, so I was like, let's do it. So basically I contracted by laying on my side and I did five contractions on both sides. So five on my left and five on my right. And through those, 10 total contractions, I was dilated to 10 centimeters. It was insane. I was like, oh my God, you're amazing. Um, I, I'm really fuzzy with the timing at this point. It's really hard to remember all of the timing. I wanna say that this was a little after midnight is when I was finally like 10 centimeters and we were ready to push. Um, my midwife wanted a urine uh, sample just so she could check where I was hydration wise and all those things. And it was really, really hard for me to relax enough to do that. That was like super, super hard. So I can't even remember if I actually was ever able to do it. I remember going into the bathroom and trying and not being able to, so, you know, whatever. Maybe I did, maybe I didn't. But then I got onto the birthing stool and I believe at this point, um, her assistant arrived 
and so she helped with um, pushing. And so a birthing stool essentially is a U-shaped uh, stool where your legs um, sit on either side and your butt sits on the back. From here, you're just supposed to, hopefully gravity helps you to push um, the baby down. The other thing that we used as a tool was a towel. So um, I believe it was her assistant was holding one end of a towel and I was holding the other just to brace myself as I was uh, pushing. So we did that for, look who's joined us, Mr. Grant himself. <laughs> he did not want to finish that nap. So hopefully he will chill out for the rest of this story. We're almost to the end. Okay, yeah, so after about an hour of pushing on the birthing stool, our midwife was like, uh, we're not really getting to where we need to be. So she's like, let's move onto the bed and we will push from there. That was at around one in the morning. So now we're on May 4th and we move onto the bed. I think before moving onto the bed, I think she, she asked me again to do a urine sample. Could have been, maybe. And <laughs> probably couldn't do it. And then she did do another internal exam just to like make sure things were okay. Um, this is what makes me pretty sure that I couldn't. It was because um, she was having a hard time with something during the internal exam. I can't exactly remember what it was because my bladder was full. Um, and then she tried to use a catheter to try to drain my bladder, but I couldn't ever really relax enough during the contraction for her to do it. And she was just like, it's okay. We don't necessarily need that anyway. Now we're pushing on the bed and what the mistake that I was making, and I don't know if this will help anybody when they're um, pushing, but the mistake I was making was not pushing through the entire contraction. That was making getting through the contraction so much worse. So let's say the contraction was lasting 15 seconds or something. I was only pushing for 10 seconds. So the last five seconds of that contraction was excruciating. So uh, I realized that I was making that mistake and just started to make sure I pushed through the entire contraction. And that may not mean pushing for a, a solid 15 seconds. It could mean that I pushed for a solid 10, took a big deep breath in, relaxed for a second, and then continued to push for the balance of the contraction. So that um, helped tremendously pushing at that point. And then probably about an hour after pushing on the bed, again, my timing may be totally off, but whatever. After about an hour, she was like, all right, the head is there. She's like, you just need to push harder, like harder than you think you're pushing because we, we need to get this head out. We just need you to get motivated to push. So what she did was she took a picture up down there to show me like, this is where you're at. Like you're so close, just give it everything you have. And that was all the motivation I needed. Like it was, it was the best thing she could have done because then I knew like, I just need to just, crush this like I just need to push so hard and one thing that I think really helped me mentally was the fact that I had been working out for years not to say that if you haven't that you can't get through this or that you can't mentally push through but for me it was something that really helped me um, in getting through each push because I basically thought of each push as like an exercise or a set or something where I just was like, I just gotta get through this. It's only gonna be 15 seconds. So just push for 15 seconds, then you get a break and then you push again. It was almost like circuit training. Like, and it was, it was what I needed to get through. After 25 more minutes of pushing at 2.25 AM, this little man made it into this world. Huh, Mr. Grant? Made it into this world. Yup. One thing to note about like while I was pushing, um, so after we got the head out, my midwife had said, okay, we just need you to push some more. And I thought it meant another big push because that's what I had been doing. And so I pushed and she was like, no, 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 slow down. We just need you to do small pushes, like little pushes. And I was like, oh, okay. I did tear a little bit and I don't know if that's why. Um, I think I've convinced myself that that's why I, t I tore just a tiny bit. I had a first degree tear, so it wasn't anything crazy. If I had just done the little pushes, then I probably wouldn't have torn. And I forget how many stitches I needed. It was in the single digit, so it wasn't that much. Immediately after he was born, I actually was able to, as he was coming out, like pick him up and put him on my chest. And he got to do skin to skin contact for over an hour. And during that time, I delivered my placenta. And our plan was always to delay cord clamping and delay it uh, until the point that the umbilical cord stopped pulsing. So once I delivered the placenta, my midwife had put the uh, put the placenta into like a bowl and just kind of uh, left it there as we continued to do skin to skin and while it continued to pump um, much needed blood into Grant. Once we were able to cut the umbilical cord, 
then Nick got to do skin to skin contact and after that then we worked on nursing. After at least a couple of hours is when the midwife did all of her like uh, vital checks, uh, just like weight, um, length, uh, all that stuff. Uh, also, while we were doing, while Nick was doing skin to skin, I believe that's when it was, she stitched me up and I honestly couldn't feel anything. Um, after uh, having pushed him out, it, I really didn't feel anything at all. I do think she used a local anesthesia to, to do things, but I just don't remember like even the shot, it may have been a tiny pinch, but I don't really remember that. Yeah, she helped wrap him up into his swaddle, get him ready for bed. Um, I got up and showered and just kind of cleaned myself off, just put on, you know, some clothes to sleep in. And we basically only slept there for a couple of hours and headed home at around 6.30, 7 o'clock that morning. And that's one of the things that I really appreciated was that I, we didn't have to stay there for long. We could have stayed there longer if we wanted to, but we had, you know, the, the dogs at home and we just wanted to sleep in our own beds and stuff. So um, we were back home by like, I want to say like 7.30, 8 o'clock in the morning, something like that. And then after that, a couple days later, my midwife came to our house to do a, a wellness check at home, taking again all of the vitals, a blood sample for Grant and all that. So. Yeah, um, I really hope I didn't forget anything. If you have any questions at all, please, please do not hesitate to reach out um, because there are other ins and outs of, of the time. I just don't want to make this video like the longest thing ever <laughs> you are expecting. Congratulations, I wish you the best of everything throughout your, your pregnancy and during your labor and delivery. I, I really look forward to hearing from all of you um, on any questions or comments that you have about this video. So thanks again, and we'll see you in the next one. Say bye. <laughs>